to start off, let's ask ourselves an important question. What exactly is art? What exactly is art? You know, that's actually a pretty good question. Conventionally, art has been associated with activities like painting, sculpture, literature, music, and hey, even cinema has been accepted as a form of art these days. This sets the idea that art simply isn't limited to the works of painters with fancy barrettes and oversized canvases. In fact, it can be much more. My definition of art is that any form of media that allows its creator to express his thoughts in a way that the audience can assimilate it, that is art. In fact, I would like to see a count of hands to see how many of you all agree with me on this definition. Okay, that's pretty great. With the coming of the 21st century and the computer age, we got a new competitor to the art world. And those are video games. You heard that right? Video games. As absurd as it does sound, allow me to elaborate. You all probably had experiences where you would ask your child to go get the groceries and he would be playing a video game and he would just turn around and reply, Mom, you can't pause an online game. And you just sit there wondering which planet he came from. Well, I have been that child too. And today's speech will be based on my experiences as that child, a gamer. Video games are essentially an amalgamation of all the forms of art out there. I need you to imagine yourself as a cook. You're making a sandwich. You've got bread, lettuce, tomatoes, and everything in between. Now imagine making a sandwich out of all the art forms out there. Painting, literature, music. You put them together, you've got yourself a video game. Yes. So let's break this down component by component, shall we? Let's start with visuals. Shadow of the Colossus is a PS2 classic that I think is a masterpiece. Shadow of the Colossus places the player in an isolated world devoid of life, yet teeming with beauty. Traverse through beautiful natural landscapes like mountains and rainforests and navigate through ruins of temples. In a painting, you see the beautiful landscapes and environments just laid out before you. But in a video game, you can be one with your environment as you experience things firsthand. Shadow of the Colossus isn't just a video game. It's an interactive starry night painting. On to the next component, music or soundtrack. In a movie, you've got epic music, happy music, sad music, motivational music, and all those other tunes playing for someone else, the actor in the movie. How sad. But in a video game, all those tunes can be playing for you, dear player. Silent Hill is a video game with the most exquisite soundtrack I've ever heard. It's surprising that with a name as bleak as Silent Hill, the composer of this video game, Akira Yamaoka, has been able to breathe so much life into the world of Silent Hill. Third component, story. Last of Us is a fairly newer video game, which I've taken as the example for this. I could have taken a lot of examples because I love video game stories, but the story just stood out with me. By the time you're done with The Last of Us, the characters will appeal to you as if they were real people. Sure, I mean, it's a generic post-apocalyptic landscape with, of course, zombies. You can't forget zombies. They are everywhere now, even in real life. But in The Last of Us, 
its characters, their personalities, they stick with you even after you're done with the video game. You will find yourself connecting with them in day-to-day -day life. This is the power of video game storytelling. It allows room for character development and a lot of other aspects you cannot find in any other media. In video game stories, you aren't just a passive observer. You can influence your own story. And to the final and special component, gameplay. Gameplay is technically the fictional laws that govern the world of a video game and allow its player to do things you can't in real life. For instance, take Devil May Cry. It's a fantasy action game that allows its players to vroom a sword like a bike and use a bike like a sword. Or even take Pokemon, for instance. It's quite popular. You must have heard of it by now. In Pokemon, players can engage themselves with a variety of colorful, magical critters and do lots of fun activities with them. I even remember making a Pokemon timetable for one of my teachers in junior school. Video game, this is the main aspect of video games that sets them apart. Gameplay is a huge part of video games, which you cannot find in any other form of art. But it's about time that you took a step back and addressed the elephant in the room. I know that a lot of you all believe that video games are but cheap cash grabs. But it would come as a surprise to you that all art came from commercial motivations. Da Vinci made his paintings for money, and Beethoven composed his music for the aristocrats. So I believe that this really isn't a very valid argument against video games. Yet, I do not advocate throwing lots of time and money at video games too. Because most often than not, we fail to realize that the true masterpiece is our lives. Winds of change, people. Art changes, video games come in. I would like to leave you all with this interesting idea. In a movie, you see things happen before you in third person. In a novel, the author tells his events to you in second person. But in a video game, you are in first person as you experience things firsthand. No they, no you, it's only I, my adventure. The winds of change are known to reshape ideas, and art is no exception. Video games are the major paradigm shift approaching the world of art as we know it. So in the future, when you walk into a museum and see video games alongside Mona Lisa and the Titanic, you'll remember me as I try to convince you all of this absurd yet fantastic idea. Thank you for your time.